Hey guys, RayZeroAU, and welcome back to my guide to Empyrean Galactic Survival. This is episode 2, and this episode will all be about the initial base and some mining. Um, and we'll probably have a chat about some of the um, in indigenous life forms on this planet as well, while we're at it. Probably while we're mining. But first of all, first thing we want to have a look at is if you press O... Uh, o yeah, O on your keyboard. Basically, it'll bring up your tech tree. And these are all the things you can unlock as you're um, as you're leveling up. Now, the main thing there's a couple of things we want to concentrate on initially. And the first thing is the assault rifle at level three, and then the shotgun at level five. So they're the two main things that we want to get. Sorry, thought I heard something. So, so level three and level five are the two areas that we want to be at. But what we'll do initially is we'll go and do some mining. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine some iron. I'm going to mine some promethium. If, I've, if you've got promethium near you, it's worthwhile mining that first. Um, just so you get your energy situation sorted out. You are going to need a lot of iron, so you will need to um, to do that. So what we're going to need to make is we're going to make, need to make some more hull blocks. And what I'm going to do is while we're off mining, I'm going to queue up a whole lot of stuff here. So remembering that gives us 10 of those. So that'll be 100. That'll do to start off with. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll make more than that. Um, we're going to need some... We're going to need some control devices. Just going to make five of those for now. Going to need some electronics. We'll make ten of that, twenty of those. Cables. Remembering to look at all the output counts. So I'm getting two cables each time, so there's 40 cables. Going to get two metal components. You do use a lot of metal components. So I'm going to make a hundred of those. Probably need a few pipes. I'm going to need some computers. And I dare say we're going to need some motors. And that should be good enough to get it going. So. And while it's doing that, what we'll do what we can do is we can we can also dump all this stuff in here. Uh, copper leaves, as I said, I'm not sure what they used for. I'm gonna keep the pixie store bundle on me. I've still got 20 minutes on that, just in case. So now I haven't made any uh, drill charges yet, and there's a very good reason for that. Basically, when you first start out, one of the easiest things that people can do and I've done it and I've seen other let's players do it is um, not keep an eye on your ammunition for your drill and initially you've only got what's in the drill at the moment plus two charges so each one's 750 and if you run out and you're not being careful with it it's very easy to dig yourself literally into a hole that you can't get out of. And if that's the case, and that's what you've done, effectively that's game over. You have to just restart. There's nothing you can do. So it's always worthwhile keeping that in mind. Alright, so we want to do the Prometheum. So what you want to do is you want to come over and sort of see where it is. What I always do is I kind of look and I go, all right, there it is there. So it's kind of right on top of it here. Then I tend to come down a little bit if I can and mine in from the side. I keep hearing a noise. And then basically uh, with your drill equipped, it's just a matter of left clicking and pointing at the ground. 
or it should be. Wasn't that working? There we go. That must have been a slight bug. Left left wasn't working. You can use left and right to dig a bit faster, but it does go through your drill charges faster as well. So um, initially, I probably wouldn't advise that, just because, as I said, you need to be careful with your your drill charges to start off with. You can use some of your starter items that you get in the um, escape pod to um, to make some more drill charges. But if you're nearby to some Promethium, because it does use a fuel pack each time you do that, and energy is something that on some maps you need to scout out the Promethium. We were lucky on this map that it actually um, that it was actually right next to us, or one of them. So there we go, the uh, blue stuff here is Promethium. Now if you have a look above my health there, what you'll find is that as I'm mining, that'll start to show some experience gains. And what you tend to find is that um, you, know, you get 20 experience for picking up a plant. Um, you tend to get about 30 experience for each um, each Promethium ore that you knock out. So now, just from, basically, once you've mined it out, then you need to go around and you need to um, use the T key on your keyboard to pick it all up. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to do that. You've just got to manually go and do it. So what you can then do is, um, what, or what you find is that you actually level a bit quicker if you're mining. Here we go, we just hit level 3. As I said, the main thing that we're looking to hit is level 5. Because we really want that shotgun. So it's probably a, it's probably a good enough amount of promethium to uh, to start off with. So I'll just pick all that up. So what I've managed to do is just basically mine in here, and I'm sort of mining along the top of the uh, of the resource node. And then what I tend to do is I tend to go around the sides and find the edges of it. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is it's a bit of OCD on my part, I suppose, that I don't like to leave resources behind or waste any resources. Um, but also, you'll see where I'm pointing now, it turns to this grey rock. And basically when you're mining around the edges, what you also happen to do is you knock out the occasional piece of crushed rock. Let's see if I can get it to uh, There. So, so we've got crushed rock there. Now crushed rock is used, is used in some of the recipes. So it's worthwhile picking it up. And what I find is that basically when I'm just mining any of the resources, if I just follow that round and just find the edges of the resource node, then as I'm mining the actual resource, I don't have to think about actually specifically going and mining for rock uh, because I'm already doing it. And you tend to pick up enough rock, more than enough really, than what you need uh, just by doing that. So it's worthwhile doing that. Um, one, as I said, it just means you're not wasting any resources. Um, and everything's left there. And you'll see uh, now that tells me that there's 90% of Promethium ores left. And tells me how many are in there. Now the one thing that wasn't around, that we haven't got near us, is magnesium. And we do need to find some magnesium. 
because magnesium is critical in making ammunition. Um, so we do. So you definitely need to find some magnesium. Now, so you think, all right, well, we haven't got any near me. How how do I locate it? Well, there's no real easy way about that. It's really just about exploration of the planet. But once you've found one of these resources, if you open the map by pressing M on your uh, keyboard, you'll see here that it shows all the uh, nodes that I've found so far. So I've got a cobalt, copper, iron, and promethium, and there's my base there. What it also does is on the right hand side of the map screen here, it tells me what resources are on this planet. So there's iron, cobalt, silicon, copper, promethium and magnesium. And it tells me how many of each of those there are on the planet and how many of them I've located. So I know there's five magnesium on this planet. We just simply need to explore a bit and find that. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to grab a bit more iron as well so now this one's a little bit different this is where you need to be careful because it's it's sort of right up on the top here and there's no easy way to get down to it Oop, that's my gun so maybe not use that so what i tend to do and i tend to do this even when i've got lots of drill packs uh, drill charges and things like that is I tend to sort of drill down on an angle so that I've got an easy way out. Um, once again, that's, that's just me. As long as you can get out, you, there's no issue. Now, the other thing you can do, we've, I've started my, um, my base obviously on the surface. You don't need to do that. You can actually build an underground base if you wanted to. You would need to mine down uh, or mine into the side of a hill or something like that. If that's what you were going to do. Probably a little bit harder initially because obviously with the uh, lack of um, drill packs that you have or drill charges that you have but that would depend obviously on what resources are near you um, in this situation I've got a lot of uh, I've got that promethium next to me so drill charges shouldn't be an issue now if you have a look um, because this is iron it's much more plentiful than uh, some of the resource nodes are smaller and they don't give quite as much this gives quite a bit and if you look at my um, experience counter above my health on the uh, bottom left there, you'll see that that's um, counting up quite well. So by the time you finish building a decent sized base, and then yeah, you're building your, your vessels and things like that, you will use a lot of iron. A lot of it. Just remembering that while we're doing this, um, I would normally on on most of my videos I would do a lot of mining off camera, but for the purpose of this video, I'm I'm doing it on camera. Uh, hopefully, it's not too dark for you guys. Um, I've actually haven't skipped through the night for this video deliberately because um, I want to talk about the, the indigenous life forms. Basically there's uh, three types of life forms on a kua. Um, you've got your slimes, which are the uh, green blobby things with the big eye. Yeah. Now you see here, basically this is where, if I wasn't careful, if I put the jetpack on, this is I'm probably still okay to get out. Yeah, I can actually still get out there. But if I wasn't careful and I kept digging down, I could reach a point where I'd run out of that of um, drill charges with no way of getting out. So it's worthwhile just keeping an eye on that. So my attention to do is just mine down the side a bit.
that just ensures that I'm going to be able to get out okay. And now, if we go to our inventory screen down the bottom here, it tells us what level we are and, and how many points we need to reach the next one, how far away we are. So, just going to mine a little bit more of this. Then we'll head over to the base. You do get points for placing blocks down. Right, so while you're building your base, you do gain some experience. Um, it's it's only it's very small. It's only like about five points per block. Uh, but having said that, if you end up building something of any decent size, um, you know all those five points add up very quickly if you're placing you know rows of ten or twenty blocks at a time or something like that. So always worth remembering that basically you get um, experience for doing a lot of things in this game um, if you attack anything basically you get experience for it and then you also get experience when you kill it um, get experience for picking things up uh, experience for uh, mining as we've seen um, experience for discovering uh, it was on base. There it is. Uh, for discovering points of interest or uh, resource nodes as well. Um, so it's worth exploring because you you do get a decent chunk of experience each time you uh, discover something. So I'm just looking around. So back to the indigenous life. So um, actually, sorry, there's actually uh, four different life forms. So we've got our uh, blobby green blobby things there they think these things over here I'm following uh, you've got your dinosaurs which are these things there's actually two different types of dinosaurs there's adult and, and child I think it's, or it might be called bull uh, a bull dinosaur and, and a um, yeah and, and a there's a smaller dinosaur um, you've got your bugs which are these things here now those three all of those three won't bother you if you don't bother them um, if you attack them and you don't kill them in one shot then basically they'll start to attack you so they're not too much of a problem you just leave them leave them be um, once we get the shotgun it'll be a different story because they're a good way of collecting um, collecting food and what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just scanning around to see if I can locate one of the other types normally they only spawn in at night um, let's see if I can find one oh. when you hear that heartbeat what it means is uh, you've run out of stamina yeah so my food's getting a little bit low Normally on a on a normal playthrough, by now I would have already um, I probably would have already hit level five and and made the shotgun, um, but I'm taking things a bit slower in this one. So all right, so this is what this is what I'm looking for at the moment. I want to try and avoid using my rations as much as possible if I need to I'll use one uh, but you see there uh, they give 500 food so you want your food right down um, before you use it and tweet your food once again you just select it on your uh, on your action bar and left click uh, it does take a moment just to select it so Need to be a little bit patient with it when you uh, when you scroll down to select it. Unfortunately, I can't see any of the other types of um, uh, the other type of of alien. It's basically called a plant monster. Looks a bit like a flower, a walking flower, um, and they will attack on sight. 
Um, they, and they tend to poison you as well. The bugs do poison you. If you attack them and they manage to attack, fight back, they will uh, poison you. But yeah, I can't see any. Um, certainly you can hear the, um, the plant monsters as well. Alright, so we'll head back to the base. You never know, one might just rock up and try and attack me. Uh, these plants here, uh, alien thorns, once again they don't have any um, perish time on them and they're worthwhile picking up because in the uh, food processor you can use those to make antidotes um, which help you against poison if you happen to get poisoned. So, so they're always worthwhile picking up. Don't use a huge amount of them. You know, hopefully we're planning on not getting poison. So alright, so back to our survival thing. I'll just transfer everything in there. Okay, I'll, I'll still keep that pixie stalk on me. You'll see the alien thorn there doesn't have anything on it. Um, we've made most of what we what we need there. And where are the blocks? Did I make blocks? Not yet. Alright, so we're going to need a few more hull blocks. Remembering it might, it takes uh, two of the metal plates to make it a, uh, a hull block. And we want to make a small generator, so what do we need? Control device. Okay, we need another control device. You'll see the items in red there saying what we need. We need a reactor core. Alright, so for the reactor core, we've got everything we need for that. Reactor core, capacitor device. So it's really a matter of just looking at it and going, have I got what I need? Simple as that. Capacitor device, control device. Oh, okay, capacitor device, that's what I need. Capacitor device. What was it, two of those? Yep. And I need a fuel tank. And then we want to start looking at the um, large constructor. So, control device, we're going to need another two of those for that. And these, you want to, these are the first things you want to get up. Basically, the large constructor, you want to get that up and running because that then opens up what you're able to build. This survival constructor is very limited. So, alright, we'll just take what's there at the moment for the, um, for the blocks that can be building while we're doing this. Or crafting while we're doing this. And just turn my jetpack on. So this is a three by three. What I normally do when it comes to starting out is I will start out on a, I'll just extend this out. So if I extend it out one on each side, then that'll be a five by five. And I can bring that across there. And bring that one across there. So that's now a 5x5. Five five. And for the initial base, that's probably as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to put one more out to make it a 7x7. Seven seven, but that's only because I need, the, I need the extra layer out there for the walls. Because I want the inside to be 5x5. Five five. So that's the only difference. And the only reason for that is just simply space. Just so that I can place things down and um, and sort of not feel crap like not have everything crowded on top of each other too much. 
Okay, so. What have we got here? A few more hull blocks there. Uh, we've got the capacitor device. So we're trying to make this more. We need electronics. So we need two more electronics. And then we should be good for the generator. Did we make the fuel tank? What are we missing from that? Electronics for that as well. I'll just let that finish. Right. So we need four of those. And then we have the fuel tank. We're going to need two motors. So for two motors, we're going to need two more electronics. And hopefully, you'll see you see here with the small generator. Uh, basically, it takes some time to actually build that. This survival constructor is a little bit slower than the um, than the large constructor. So. Um, that's another reason why you really want to get that up and running. So we've got those extra blocks there. We can come over here and just place some of these down. We are going to need some more blocks for the um, for the walls. I'm not going to worry too much about that to start with. And we want to put that line across there. Alright, so as I said, that gives us a 7x7 seven seven square. But remembering that this line is going to be walls and a door and things like that, walls around. So we're only going to end up with 5x5 five five usable space. And I want the walls eventually to be two, high, two blocks high. And the reason for that is then I can fit in, I can change the small fuel tank into being a um, large fuel tank. Okay, so there's that, there's that, uh, we made one motor, um, do we only need one motor, we need two motors, All right. make another motor, and we need five electronics. then we can make the large constructor all right so to place these down what we do is you just put them on your hot bar and place them where you want them to be now I'm imagining that this is going to be the front here so I'm going to place this at the back here but remembering that we need to place it one block in on each side because they're going to be walls there. Now if you want to rotate it so that it's in a different, it's positioned differently, you just use the insert, delete, home, end, page up, page down to move in the different axes. So you see there. And so then when you've got it in the place you want it to uh, to be, you just left click. There we go. Small generator placed. And then I will place the fuel tank just there next to it. Okay, so we've got our large constructor now as well. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move those pixie bundles down here. I'm going to bring all this stuff out. Uh, that can stay in there. Fuel pack. That can stay in there. Anything. Metal plates, cables, components. All the, uh, all the crafting stuff. Iron ore can stay in here. Promethea more. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tell it to make some more fuel packs. 
Now you'll see there that it gives me two fuel packs for every 10 Promethean pellets. And these are the standard fuel packs. We do get a larger one later in, in the game. So that's going to give me 20 fuel packs there. And so that's going to take 100. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to tell it to use up the, fuel, uh, the pellets that we've got at the moment. And then I'm going to tell it to, okay, I want you to make the iron ingots out of the iron ore that we mined. We've got 137 iron ore. It takes five and we get 10 each time. So basically if we shift click, that's 50, 100, 150. That'll use up that ore. And then we want to also tell it to make some more Promethean pellets from the Promethean ore that we mined. So we've got 145. Once again, we get 10, but we get 10 for every one ore. So what we can do is just go in and set it to that. It'll make, it'll use all that up. Um, I'll take those ones out. We want to go and place the large constructor as we come into daytime. Now the large constructor is um, two by two, so two blocks by two blocks. And there we go, we just place it down. You can orientate it round, I'm never 100% sure which way this is supposed to go, so it really doesn't matter. And then what we do is you fill up your fuel tank, go up to the small generator and to power it on you press Y. Now, there we go, it's up and running. There's our uh, large constructor up and running and our core. Now, bear in mind that in a moment, I will probably get a message saying that drones are being sent to attack the base. Uh, these are robotic drones that are just sent um, at random times to attack you. The first time, Normally there's only the one drone and it's pretty easy to, to take care of. And it does take a little bit of time for that to come over. So there's no need to panic if you get that message. Um, you should certainly be able to take it out easy enough with your pistol. Um, or if you've managed to actually reach uh, level 3, which we have, we can now look at actually making the, um, oh, let's take the assault rifle. So, we haven't had that message yet. So basically most of our crafting is now going to be done in this constructor. Um, if we go in here, you'll see we've got a lot more blocks to play with. Uh, we've now got the hover vessel um, showing in there. Uh, we've got some other things here. Uh, food processor is now in here. We've got an oxygen tank. Uh, we can make doors and things like that. In here and we can unlock the other things as well um, using our skill points and the tech tree and we'll maybe look at that in the next episode uh, we have got some points and what I might do between this episode and the next is I might just mine a bit more of this stuff around um, and see if I can get to uh, level level 5 now there we go I've been waiting for this to happen so glad it's happened now Basically, you see the message up there, I'm dying from a lack of food. So oh. you look at my food bar, it's it's zero. So And this is the effect you'll end up getting on screen when that happens. So in this situation, I'm going to use one of my emergency rations to sort that out. So before we get too low. So we just select it. And you'll see the, um, the ration pack is the best food in the game. It has no perish time and it fully refills your hunger bar. So that's good. Took a bit of hit on health, but that's not an issue. Basically, uh, we should, we'll be able to get a, um, a medic, medic station up before too long. So we still haven't had that message saying anything's going to come and attack us yet. So I think what I'll do is I'll call the video here, guys. 
Uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've watched. I uh, hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to leave them in the, uh, in the comments section and I'll look to address those in, in one of the future episodes. And um, look forward to seeing you all next time. Uh, if you did enjoy what you've seen, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, I'm Raid0AU, signing out.